The amphibious assault ship USS America was abuzz with activity as Marines of the 31st Marine Expeditionary Unit prepared to make an amphibious assault from the Coral Sea in Queensland, Australia. USS America is the lead ship of the Expeditionary Strike Group that includes the amphibious transport dock ships USS Green Bay and USS New Orleans. All are participating in Exercise Talisman Sabre 23. David Vergun, USDOD, reports. Transporting Marines to shore are CH-53D helicopters and MV-22B Osprey tiltrotor aircraft. Providing close combat air support for the landing are F-35B Lightning II aircraft and AH-1Z Viper helicopter gunships. The Green Bay and New Orleans both have well decks that allow landing craft air cushion hovercraft to put Marines ashore quickly. Dozens of exercise leaders gathered in the fitness room of the America where a large, cardboard model of the landing area was on the floor showing landing zones, terrain features, objectives, enemy disposition and other key elements. U.S. Marines and forces from Japan, Australia and Germany gathered around the terrain model for the rehearsal of concept briefing of the planned amphibious assault that included reconnaissance and surveillance, weapons disposition, intelligence, enemy force locations, logistics, medical and other aspects. Marine Corps Colonel Matthew C. Danner, commander of the 31st Marine Expeditionary Unit, said an amphibious assault has a lot of moving parts and a lot can go wrong, which is why this briefing is so critical. In a real combat situation, it's exactly how the planning takes place. Commenting on the presence of Allied forces on USS America and on their own ships in the vicinity, Danner said the Marine Corps always operates with allies and partners, particularly in the Indo-Pacific region. U.S. Navy Rear Admiral Christopher Stone, commander of Task Force 763, said allies in this exercise are fully integrated and communicate among each other constantly so everyone has a clear picture of what's happening or going to happen. These allies and partner nations desire regional security, freedom of navigation and peaceful coexistence. A lot of other activity was taking place elsewhere on the America, as well. This year marks the 10th iteration of Talisman Sabre, a biennial exercise designed to advance a free and open Indo-Pacific by strengthening partnerships and interoperability among key allies. The spelling of the name, Sabre vs Sabre, reflects which country is leading the exercise, Talisman Sabre when Australia leads and Talisman Sabre when the US leads. Over 30,000 personnel and 13 nations from Japan to Germany are participating in this year's full exercise. This year is the largest talisman saber ever in its history since the exercises began in 2005. 